Hello, welcome to Ekidea, where we are with train for just evil and structural engineering. On our last discussion about this building design, we discussed about how we um, position these column positions and all that, and we did a structural framing, and we noticed that the column positions on the ground floor are not at the same positions on the on the first floor. That's because this ground floor plan is different from the first floor plan. So if you want to know about what we discussed on the previous um, video of this, I would say you should just watch the other part of this video just here and all that. So right now on this new, uh, on this part, I'll be showing you how to now model this building using the software portal structure. So we are about performing the structural design of this simple building. So let us begin right now. Now, since we are using the software portal structure, before we must import this plan or export this plan to this software, we will have to save this drawing on its own. So right now to save this particular framing, on its own, I will have to highlight this particular drawing right now and then type W, enter to now save this particular drawing on its own alone. So I will come here right now and then click on this. I have already done this on my previous video. So as you can see right now, I have already saved it before, but this is just the procedure that you're meant to save. So right now, you just have to um, put the file name. So right now, I'll just name this one right now, Pega Work 2. As you know that this is a real life project. So I have already told you guys that this is a real life project. Then you must have to come here and choose what DSF here. So always choose DSF file format and not DWG. Then come here right now and then say what save, okay? And then come here and then say okay. So so with this now you see that this now is now saved. If I now navigate now to my desktop here, you will notice that it is now being saved. As you can see from my desktop here, and then open twenty twenty four work, and then you will see that this is now being saved as what the um, Tega work two. So this is now the one we are going to export either this. All these they are the same thing we will now export this drawing to now put a structure for our structural modeling and then we will now move on to the structural design okay now so but before we begin i will say that welcome to ekidel we are with train future civil we are with train future civil and structural engineer so if you are new on ekidel consider subscribing because here on ekidel we train future civil and structural engineer and my name is justice Umaka and i am your instructor okay so right now let's now go and uh, move on to the software portal structure for the modeling and for, the, and for the design of that building. So right now, once you have opened your software portal structure regarding any version that you are using, the first thing you're going to do right now for you to import your 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 building plan into this portal structure, the first thing you do is to come to file here, and then come to file, and then you will see where they say model file import, model file import, and then go over here and then click on what external reference drawing. It will show you a dialog box showing the load DSF. So quickly come here right now and then click on what load DSF. Now on this place right now, I like to show your um, your computer dialog box where you have to now go and choose the file from your computer. So right now we saved it on desktop and on the desktop we saved on P24 um, folder. So I'll look, I'll really locate that right now, P24 folder. Okay, and then I'll quickly load this up right now and then say what? Okay, I'll open here and then you have to um, allow it to show and then click on here. Just you can quickly choose your unit. Basically, I I would I would like you to use what. Um, millimeter, but despite the one you're using, you can really choose on that and, and then go on. So right now, I will really just choose one millimeter and then go on here and then say okay. Now from here now, I will have to now activate this um, choose external reference drawing for it to display. And now you, now you, you can now see our, our our plan now is now showing here as a trace. Okay. Now I will come here right now and then say use color and then come here and then import member. So right now I'm trying to import my that my grid line, this grid line that we set on this place. Remember that we sort we set two 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 layers. Grid line and then column. So we are trying to now import this this on um, grid line, this on um, grid line layer as an axis. So import axis as grid line, grid add, and then import column as column layer, which is also set on this place here, column layer. So right now we are trying to import these two um code, these two layers into the software portal structure as a structural element. Okay, for columns. Okay. So right now, come here right now, and then say what's okay here. So with that now, I like the software to now import the um the to now convert the axis. To, to, for the, to, to, to now convert the, that grid line to axis and the column layer to column element, okay? And then come here right now and then say, don't, don't say start, just say close, okay? And then you will now see that our drawing here will just display, allow it to now display everything. Then come here and then click on what um, close here. So you can now see our drawing now is now being displayed, showing the columns and everything are all showing as you can see them right now. So right now, if I now navigate on my 3D view here, you will see that the only thing that we have here is only our grid line and then our columns, okay? 3D view here. So you cannot see that all what we have here is just our columns and all that. That's because that is the only thing that we have 
on this place okay so right now we will now begin to now insert our beams and all that okay so i'll now move on to this place again right now come back to my plan view and then begin to now model for my beams okay to, to, to now insert your beam on this software just come to this place that says concrete member and then click on what concrete beam here and allow it to show the dialog box which is here and then you have to now set your, the size of your concrete um beam which is the width so i'll choose one two two five as my width of beam and then come here as the depth of beam i'll come here and choose what 450 you can quickly choose to type it in or just or just right click and then choose okay so or you just type 450 and that's all to go so right now once i have said this now i'll now come here right now and then click on this first and then click on the last one to insert my beam okay automatically right now this software will just divide this because there's a column here it will now make this a two span beam which is a continuous beam and now i will now continue again right now escape and then put in my main beam first which is the main primary beam here before i'll now go and insert the other secondary beam here which is now supported by this other beam okay so with this right now, I'll just repeat this all, all, all this process right now by just inserting all my beams, as you can see what I'm doing right now. Inserting my beams and then go again here, click on this primary beam, insert this first, and now go and insert this second beam one here and keep this here, okay? And then go over again right now, insert this from here to here, and then okay. Now the whole process right now is for you to insert all your beams right now. If you want to know more about social design, our advice, you enroll for our 24 Ekidel mentorship um, training. Okay, so right now you can see that this is now um, having some issues. I'll come here just now on this place that says E and then come here and put what? Uh, let me say 75 and see if that will work first. Enter. Okay, that's too much. So I'll put here 37.5, 37.5 and then come here and say what? Update here. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I have just um, I'll just aligned that on this place. If it's not still working, okay, there's still some changes here. I'll come here just now and then um, try to use, um, let me say, um, 35 and then update. Okay, that's not okay. I'm just 25 and then updates. Let me see. Okay, yeah, that's that's a bit good. So, right, okay, now that's not okay here. I'll come here and try 27.5, 27.5, and then updates. Okay, okay, so let me just try 39 and all that, and then say updates. Okay, that's fine. So, right, I can see that, that, that that's now okay now. I will now come again, right? But now, inside this other beam here, I have to come here and make sure that this is now zero back, and then come here and then click on this, and then click on this here, and insert this. Okay, that's fine. And then continue all the way down to this other place here. Now, the whole idea is that you must insert, first of all, the primary beams, okay, before you can insert the secondary beams, okay? Uh, come again, right now, click on this, and then click all the way down to this place here, and then come again, right now, click on this, and then click on this now, insert all the way down to this other place here, and keep this, okay, that's fine. And then click on this right now, and then click on this okay that's fine and then go again right now we have a scrolling beam here and then i'll come here click on this and then click on this here okay that's fine now if you want to know the principles regarding design because i will not be able to say all the principles here i will advise you enroll into our ekidel mentorship class for this for this month of, of, of january 2024 so enroll for that and then you can get the link down below it's not really expensive okay so you can get the link down below and enroll for our academic mentorship club for version and, and 24 um, batch for the training and all that okay so right now we have now inserted our beam but if i now go and click on my 3d view here you will see that we have just done our first um floor beam as you can see right now which is the beams and i'll come back to my plan view right now so after you have done with your beams right now the next thing is now go and insert our slab okay so from, from our slabs now now insert your slab come here click on concrete member here and then click on slab here okay and then from slabs now i'll now come here and then impute my slab thickness which is my slab height i'll say 150 and i'll come here just now and then take my cover to be 25 that's okay and come here and apply my load my load right now i'll take 1.5 as my dead load which comprises of the partition and what finishing load and i'll come here right now since this is since this building is for a residential building as you can see right now i'll come here and then choose my impose load right click here and choose 1.5 as what my impose load okay and i'll come here right now and then begin to insert my slab okay by clicking on the panels where i have slabs okay and then once I'm done with that just now, I will now move on to the next place now. If I now go and then escape, go to my 3D view right now, click on my 3D view here. You will see that we now have our slab as you can see then right now. So I will now come here, plan view again. Now, since we have done with the slab, the next thing now to do right now is now begin to release the moment at the end of the beam. So I will just come here right now, click on this. Since this is a um, both end support, I will come here, click on this, and then click on this, and then click on this, and then click on this. Now, if you want to know the principle, about how to release moment from the beams because I will not be able to explain everything here. I will advise you enroll for our Ekidel mentorship class and all that. The link to enroll for that is in the link down below and it's not really expensive. It's a just from dollars and you can pay four times payment installment and all that. So I'll come again right now, click on this and then click on this. Sorry, click on this again right now. So I'll quickly select all the um, both ends supported and all that. So once I'm done right now, setting all the boot ends for the right now, I'll now come here right now, right, right click here, and then come here, and then click on what update end condition, I'll come here right now and then say what boot end hinge, okay? 
And then I will allow it to show the dialog box. I'll say yes, I apply to select beams. Okay, and I'll come again right now. I miss this one. This other one says it's also broken somebody right now. And then come here right now and then say what? Both ends hinge. Okay. So with this right now, if I now zoom into the end of the beams right now, you can now see that there is a free moment there showing zero. Okay. That's because that's because hmm, moments on these ends are meant to be zero. I'll come again right now and click on the left hand side right now for the ones carrying the left hand side. And then come here and then the left hand. Okay. Come again here. Click on this and select this. And this also left hand. Click on this. This also left end. And also this now that there, there, there is a principle behind all this, so that's why I will not be able to explain all that because it, it, it will make this video have a longer duration and all that. But to learn more about structural design, our advice should go and enroll. Just click on the link down below and enroll for our academic membership class. Okay, that's fine. And I'll go again right now and then click on this other one here. Click on this and then come again here and then click on this. Hold my control key and then select all the ones are going for J end and then this also is going for J end and this also. J end aspiration. No, this is not the end. And then this, uh, let me see. This also is J end. And then now uh, it is better for you to, hinge. if you're choosing to hinge, you must hinge everything. And if you don't hinge, then, and if you don't, if you're sure you, you are not going to hinge or don't even attempt to hinge at all. Okay. Come here and then J end. Okay. Now there is a reason for this hinging. It helps to reduce the cost of the construction for the building node. So if you're building for, for, for a project with someone and someone that hinge his own building will, will, Will like probably win the contract because the cost of the construction of his own um, um design will be more cheaper than you that did not hinge okay so i'll come again right now this is not hinge i'll come here right now and then hinge on the end side which is the i am g i end and i come here i to the hinge that's fine so make sure that all the beam ends are hinged as you can see right now that all my beam ends are hinged as you can confirm that all the beam ends are having zero all the beam ends are having zero moments okay okay that's fine so right now once i'm done hinging right now i will now come now and then insert my story so right now come here right now click on this place right now and then come here and then say insert what story okay so right now i will say insert number of story two because i already have one here insert the number of story two knowing that this is just a one story building i'll say yes as you can see from, from the card file here only one story building right now so i'll come here and, and then say yes and then come again right now generate um story i'll say yes sorry i'll have to make this story one active fade for generate make story one active and then come here and then say generate story and i'll come here right now from story one to story two copy everything except the slab because we are now trying to insert the roof beams okay come here and then say okay and all that and then come here and then say close okay so right if i go on my on my pdv right now you now see that we now have the story one and the story two now being active so since we don't have slab on this place right now on this roof area i'll have to reduce the depth of my beam from 450 to 300 because there's no slab here so i'll be back right now first of all i'll go first and then save first okay so once it is done saving right now i will now come and then and now i can reduce the depth of my roof beams because there is no um there is no slab on that area so i'll, I'll just minus 450 which is the depth of the beam minus 150 which, which in the depth of the slab i will now get the main depth of beam to be 300 okay so right now to now reduce the depth of my roof beam i'll quickly go on this place right now make story 2 active because that is the story that is on this level and then go to my beam here click on this and then right click here and i'll come here and say what summary table okay and then i'll wait for it to now display summary table i'll come here right now click on this button which is the depth come here and type my new depth 300 300 sorry 300 and i'll come here right now and then say what okay here and i like to now change automatically everything here will change to 300 first like i can see right now then come here right now and then say what close okay that's fine so you can see that the depth of beam now has now reduced from 450 to now what 300 i'll now come back to what story one here and make it to be active again and then i'll now come back to my um, plan view so the next thing right now my plan view now is now begin to insert the load of what of of the of the block wall on this on this um ground floor beams here so i'll come right now to my plan view here of story two and then make sure i am on story one because it's on that place that we have the block wall load on the beams okay so now insert your beam wall load on the beams what you just do right now is do what click on any of the beams right now on the ground floor right click on that on that place and then come here and then say edit beam wall load here okay now on doing that right now naturally that the was right now on this place now i'll now come here and then put in my wall unit weight, which is three point four seven based on nine inches block wall then come here right now and then put in what my 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 wall height basically the the height of of the ground floor and first floor is what three meters so right now i'll now come here and then put in what 2.7 2.7 as my height of of my block wall because that is the depth at which that's the the, the space at which the block is being occupying if you minus the depth of the roof beam okay then right now you now come here and then come here and put what three zero point two two five as the block wall thickness which is nine inches block wall 
Okay, if in your country you, you guys use 250, just put 0 0.25 here and then come here right now and then say what? Um, okay, here, okay. Now, on saying okay, right now, you cannot see that we now have this. Once you load a beam, it will, not, it will just show a highlight of that of, of this kind of color here. Now, on our 3DV right now, you now see that there is a beam wall load on that. I can see right now that this is now showing um, a load as you can see then just now. There's a load here showing here as I can see there right now. So I'll just come here again back to my plan view right now and then copy that beam. Click on this beam right now. Copy the load of that of that beam. So come here and then say copy beam wall load. And then come here to now paste it, paste it on all of the of the beams carrying wall load. I'll come here right now. Click on this on the first beam here. Hold my shift key. Click on the last beam and then come here. By right click here and then say paste copy beam load and I'll say yes. Okay. Okay. Now on doing that right now, knowing that on this other one that is on this staircase area, if you come to the plan view here, this is not carrying a wall load here. So I'll have to go and remove this beam, this this wall load um, on this beam here. And also, if you check on this aspen pose here, there are some beams are not carrying wall load. Like these other beams here around this perimeter is not carrying wall load. That because of this cantilever that is here, that is on this perimeter here. So these other beams around the perimeter here, from here all the way down on this ground floor here, are not carrying wall load. Okay. And this other one is not carrying wall load here. So right now, come here right now. Come back to my, to my place here. Click on this beam right now to now remove the wall load. Okay, so I'll come here, click on this. Let me come again. Let me see. Okay, that's fine. From here to here. So I'll come again right now on this place now. Click on my control key. Click on this and click on this other one. So just let all the ones that are not carrying the wall load. And then this other one here from this, 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 and then this. Okay, are not carrying wall load. So right now I click here and then say what? Delete beam wall load. Okay, that's fine. I'll say yes, delete. So on this right now, you can now see that we have now removed the beam wall load on that. Now, now the reason for doing that is because on this other place here, we have a cantilever beam on this, uh, um, a cantilever of this building on this other first floor here. So we are going to insert a cantilever, this cantilever slab around the perimeter as you see right now. So right now, the load of the, the, the wall load that would have been on this beam is now being transferred to the edge of the cantilever slab, which I'm going to show you how to insert cantilever slab and also cantilever wall load on the edge of the cantilever slab. On, that will be on our next part of this building, okay? Knowing that you can see right now from our CAD file that that most columns on this first floor here are not going are going to terminate on the slab because they are appearing on the empty space of the building, causing obstruction to the people using this first floor of the building, okay? So right now we are going to um, modify this first floor here, modify this first floor plan by taking off most of the columns except these three columns here. I said these three columns here, all other columns here will, will be going off. So just watch the, the, the next part of this um, video series to see how I'm going to modify the first floor plan. Because looking at this right now, you can see that the first floor, that, that this ground floor plan and the first floor plan are purely different. Okay. So watch the, the next part right now to, to now see how to now modify this um, first floor reading plan to now suit what we have here on this place. Okay. So right now, if you want to know more about social design, I, I, I still say that you can enroll for our Ekidel mentorship class. Don't miss this, this opportunity for this batch, which is 24 first batch. Don't miss it. It's not really expensive. It's around $480 and you can pay up to three times um, installment. That is to that divide it into three parts and all that. So thank you so much and God bless you. And if you find this very, very useful, I would say you should click on the like button. Please like, like this video so that this video can go viral. And also for, for new subscribers, click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss our amazing videos. Okay. So thank you so much and God bless you. See you on the next part of this video. Watch then and bye for now.